So now we're going to have Cameron Webb come and tell us about the public as a partner in the Advanced Mosquito Surveillance Networks to protect public health. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. So um, uh, today we've seen lots of talks about really interesting uh, uh, plants and animals, but I'm here to tell you that uh, I'm most interested in the most charismatic of the Australian wildlife. <laughs> That's the mosquito. Um, there's about 300 species of mosquito in Australia They're found in an incredibly diverse range of habitats from the coast to the mountains. The problem is they occasionally bite us, and when they bite us they transmit disease-causing pathogens like Ross River virus. And even though we're free generally of some of the really severe nuisance biting, uh, severe mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and Zika here in Australia, thousands of Australians get sick every year from Ross River virus. And so we're trying to think how citizen science can perhaps help us uh, battle some of these uh, diseases. So throughout Australia, there are surveillance programs in place, generally coordinated by the state health authority in cooperation with uh, local government. And these programs have been running for a number of decades now, and they're quite good at mapping changes in mosquito populations associated with our local wetlands. And generally, all of them, although they vary a little bit in their structure, they involve uh, members of the Department of Health, local councils, or sometimes other stakeholders, going out, catching mosquitoes, counting them, identifying them, and testing to see whether they're carrying virus. That information then goes back to the health authority and prompts either mosquito control or perhaps those health warnings that you see every summer that talks about increasing health risks uh, where extra repellent. Now the problem is that looking to the future, it's not the mosquitoes in our wetlands that's the problem, it's these exotic mosquitoes that are knocking on our door. So species like the yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti, or the Asian tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus. Now these are not mosquitoes that breed in our local wetlands, they breed in water holding containers in our backyards. And the introduction of those into Australia, particularly our major metropolitan areas, is a real problem. I don't want to have to be dealing with outbreaks of dengue in Sydney uh, on a regular basis. So what this means is that health authorities have to shift their focus from the swamps to the suburbs. And that means that some of our current surveillance strategies aren't going to work. They're not easily adaptable for that. And so now we have to look at some of the, perhaps citizen science can fill some of these gaps. Now, this is very much in its infancy in Australia. Um, we know from um, overseas experience that this is a gro this growing momentum for citizen science to be incorporated in, in mosquito surveillance in the US and particularly in Europe. But here in South Australia there's been some trial run where there's some projects looking at the different types of traps that you can use in backyards to undertake surveillance of mosquitoes. And generally speaking what we're finding is that the cheaper, easier to distribute traps aren't collecting as many mosquitoes as current surveillance methods, but they are collecting the key species, so we're still getting that good information. But we really need to be able to scale that up. And one of the problems that, behind, the, one of the reasons why we have to scale it up is that the mosquitoes that are found in these backyard habitats the mosquitoes are worried about don't fly very far, only about 100, 200 metres. And so it's very difficult to get adequate coverage to detect those. And so some of the work being done here um, at the University of South Australia is, is, is same as here. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, Seamus uh, will be starting a new project with uh, uh, Professor Craig Williams soon. Uh, we're trying to understand some of the science behind both the ways in which we can, we can use these traps, the data we're getting, and also how sort of smartphones and other technologies might be able to incorporate this, this data. And so look out for a crowdfunding initiative to be launched shortly about that. But one of the biggest and most successful projects to date has been done in South East Queensland around Brisbane. There's an award-winning initiative from my colleagues at the Metro South uh, Department of Queensland Health. And basically what they're mixing is some do-it-yourself mosquito traps with some high-end laboratory techniques to try to undertake surveillance for some of these exotic mosquitoes in South East Queensland and actually quite intentionally trying to extend the reach of current surveillance programs that are in place. At the moment, exotic mosquito surveillance is really generally only carried out at first ports of entry, airports, seaports, by the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources, and health is looking at ways that they can extend that surveillance into the suburbs. They've had amazing response. Uh, after only just a couple of years, there's been about 3,000 participants um, in the program. They've collected about 160,000 mosquito eggs, which is a lot of eggs. But what I think is really impressive is that their participation rate, the engagement, has been about 50 to 60 per cent. So that means about 50 to 60 per cent of the people who get sent out these kits to collect mosquito eggs actually return them. And so I think this is really great. And so the way this program works is that you get to use these really high-tech bits of equipment, uh, like this mosquito trap here, which is a plastic bucket uh, full of water. Um, 
But where the tech comes into it is that we just basically use a bit of paper that's put into this um, bucket. The mosquitoes come in, lay their eggs on the paper, and those pieces of paper get sent into the lab from the community. Images are taken of the eggs, of these pieces of paper, so you can count the eggs. But here's when it gets uh, really great, I think. You can hatch out those eggs and then test what hatches using molecular techniques to see whether any of these exotic mosquitoes are present. So you only get a yes-no answer, but a yes-no answer is absolutely critical when we're trying to detect these exotic mosquitoes. Importantly, too, as part of this program, there's an acknowledgement just uh, that you need some great support to kind of manage all this data. And this is something that has really been deficient in a lot of our programs. We're, we're, we're thinking about citizen science as an add-on outside of our normal day job, and we just don't have the time or the capacity to do some of this work. And, and this is what Metro South has been really successful with, not only being able to map out sort of the, the distribution of mosquitoes in these areas of Brisbane, but also to communicate back to the participants. And I think this is really adding to the engagement, uh, which is really successful. So building on these ex um, uh, examples at the moment and really um, kind of responding to this growing appetite to the citizen science for mosquito surveillance as highlighted by the Global Mosquito Alert Project is how we can do this in Australia. And, and we understand that one of the really critical things here is that we want to tap into this appetite for citizen scientists to be involved in mosquito surveillance, but we want the data to be useful. And one of the ways that we're thinking about doing that is developing a national expert body that can advise on the ways in which these programs can be designed so the data can best be dovetailed into the existing surveillance programs. Because it's one thing to have the enthusiasm of the public, I want to have the, enthusiastic, uh, the enthusiasm of my bosses in health departments around the country to be able to use this data in a very constructive way. And I think sometimes uh, that's the challenge that we're really making. But we've been quite successful in getting together a group of people in Australia who are really enthusiastic about it and have started to form our sort of Aussie Mozzie uh, citizen science working group. So thanks very much for, uh, for listening. And I'm, I'd be happy to take um, questions at the end of the session. But I love your feedback because you're the people that uh, have the expertise that I really uh, want to learn from, the, the people who have experience with citizen science. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you.